madam uh, there, we will have a just small discussion on prom and we will stop i will uh, directly put the uh, question uh, that is a clinical scenario and i will discuss on it okay madam okay okay, uh, okay. it's a 27 year old g2 p1 l1 now 29 weeks of gestation previous preterm delivery now comes with a spontaneous conception leaking pv since 3 hours okay lower abdomen pain general condition fair per abdomen uh, uterus 30 weeks contractions are there cervix uh, os open mucoid discharge wet appearance is there so first thing what i want to know is that how do you define a premature rupture of membrane preterm premature of rupture of membrane so and like uh, I, i told you all that the definition for a preterm is between 20 and 37 weeks if during that is only preterm labor please don't get confused with preterm labor preterm premature rupture of membranes because when she ruptures the membranes it's a totally different management the whole management is different so the same period as i was telling you only between 20 and 37 weeks that is preterm a pre labor rupture of membranes see how does this patient present actually this is the same presentation uh, or uh, uh, is there yeah. a different presentation yeah many times see, see they actually confuse sometimes they will tell you a sudden gush of fluid then it's very easy for us to understand then after some time they will sometimes they will come and tell you madam little bit of uh, watery like fluid went and then it stopped then you are confused then sometimes they will tell you they got a little bleeding whenever they tell you bleeding at many times it will be a blood stain discharge you know what happens when all that liquor is drained off they should then go for an abruption so please remember do a scan to see the amount of liquor that is very very important then if you still got a doubt as achwit was saying then you know what i would tell you ask him to wear a clean pad white pad and then you see whether that gets soaked or not okay because many people might say so many tests for um, and premature rupture of membranes so very very so as i told you these are all the the, con- the confusion which the patient can add on when they are talking to you so what you do is when she has come to you ask her the history properly and then if you have got time you can give her a clean white pad and watch then you can put a speculum this is a condition where you put a sterile speculum examination there are only two conditions in obs which you should do a sterile speculum one is an antepartum hemorrhage another one is in uh, a preterm premature rupture of membrane after putting no. the speculum will you ask them to call for uh, yeah correct to, uh, so when you do that speculum sometimes what happens is you can see the lyca coming through the os then you don't have to ask her to call okay that itself is self explanatory but if you do not see that then you will have to ask her to cough uh, or any valsalva maneuver etc so what are any some those they are called the provocative tests and then see whether there is like a coming through the um, uh, through the thing but what i want you to know is just one very very important thing do not do a digital examination unless you have decided on termination this is the golden word to be remembered in a pre preterm premature rupture of membranes because when you do a digital examination that means you have decided to terminate why i tell you that is because when you have done even one digital examination the incidence of chorea amnionitis is very very high so please if you have decided to terminate only should you do a digital otherwise you do only a sterile speculum i hope you have understood the difference between okay okay. okay okay madam in this what is the role of this ferning ph and all these things ah, really yeah that's yeah. very good see when you many times i told you this confusion is what i remember there were some representatives who who actually uh, sold us uh, some panty liners they were act that is actually like the nitrogen test the nitrogen test you know the panty liner would turn blue and then they told us that if it turns blue madam that means she is leaking that is actually like the nitrogen paper test so then the nitrogen paper test is actually when it turns blue then actually you must always remember the normal ph of the vagina is actually about 4.5 but that ph of the liquor is alkaline it is around 7.7 to 7.3 so when you take that liquor and if you put it on a glass slide you will see ferning okay that tells you it is liquor so when you take that secretion and when you put it on a glass slide air dry it and look under the microscope if you find ferning that means it tells you that it is so actually this is a bedside test which you can actually be doing putting on a glass slide dry slide and checking out but the best thing if you ask me is a clean white pad okay and okay, then okay. of course the the ultimate thing that you should be doing is an amniotic ultrasound ultrasound afi afi 
FI. So, madam, uh, this is a case. Now we will come to the management part of it. Okay. Uh, okay. See, whenever we say PPRM, it's always a confusion uh, whether to terminate, whether to prolong, if you prolong, what to do, and all these things are always an expected management. This is so confusing thing. So, madam, just highlight on that expected okay. management as well as the termination. When will you terminate and when will you okay. do it? Okay. Uh, see, uh, the ultimate aim for all of us in a preterm premature is 34 weeks. Once you have reached 34 weeks and if she's leaking, it is best that you terminate because whenever you are conserving this pregnancy, you're sitting on a uh, bombshell because anytime it can explode and it can go in for choriamnionitis. So what are the features of choriamnionitis? Uh, cho choriamnionitis, normally the patient will have fever, tachycardia, you will have a tense and tender abdomen, you will have foul smelling discharge and leukocytosis. Okay, these are the five things of choriamnionitis. So if at all you are conserving that pregnancy, watch your pulse, watch your temperature, do repeated counts, do a CRP if you want. You understand? So by then you are going on watching whether she's going to, because that is the dreaded problem. If at any time you think that she's going in for a, for a, a choriamnionitis, please terminate that pregnancy. Do not carry on that pregnancy because you, are, as I told you all, it is a terrible uh, thing. Okay. Then when you, when Ashwath asked about the most important defining factor as to when will I and how long will I carry on, not necessary beyond 34 weeks. If, if you take the pregnancy beyond 34 weeks, it is best that you terminate in your own interest and in interest to the baby. You must remember one is baby, mother will have choriamnionitis. The second thing is the baby will have sepsis. You must remember that baby will die later in the neonatal period due to sepsis. So you will have to think of the gestational age, your neonatal care, the maternal infection, the abruptio. Keep on watching that pad, which I told you, the clean white pad. Please watch out that pad uh, to see whether there is any blood staining in it, etc. You understand? And then sometime back, Ashutha was asking me about preterm labor. Will you send them home? Preterm labor, I will send her home. But a preterm premature rupture of membranes, should be in hospital from the time of diagnosis till birth. Okay, that Madam, is very, very important. Uh, last two questions which I want to ask one role of tocolysis and role of antibiotics. Uh, in this patient, uh, in okay. this patient, tocolysis. Okay. Yeah, very, very important. See, actually, if at all you give tocolysis again, it's only for the uh, steroids. So you can give uh, uh, the uh, tocolysis for 48 hours for the steroids, after that, you can stop. Now, will you give steroids? You can give steroids if there is no infection. That is one very important thing. You can give, there is no problem. Now, when will you terminate? There are three important things for termination. One, as I told you, a non-reassuring trace. Second, choriamnionitis. Third, abruption. Three absolute indications for termination. So, and once you have reached 34 weeks, you are sitting on a bombshell. Don't go and carry on the pregnancy with so much of risks. Because in the end, if something happens, they will put the blame on you. And once choriamnionitis is established, they will not respond to your induction also. Their response to induction becomes very poor, extremely poor. So remember that that is the biggest problem that once she's established choriamnionitis, she is not going to respond to your induction. Okay. Then coming to the antibiotics, antibiotics that is the that is most what? important. Uh, and madam, tell us that will you give direct antibiotics or will you do a swab test and uh, GBS, uh, whatever, okay. and then do uh, what yes, is very good and the protocols? Very good. So, it is good if at all you want to do for a group B strep, you can take either a vaginal swab or even a rectal swab. Both are okay for a group B strep. And whenever we are giving ampicillin, it is for prevention of group B streptococcus because it can produce bad meningitis in the baby. And you may lose the baby. You understand? So that is why we always think of giving antibiotics. Then, as Ashwit said, it is always make it a habit. I told you sterile speculum examination to look out for that liquor. At that time, just take a high vaginal swab. Don't take a low vaginal swab. That will always be contaminated. You understand? So any swabs that you take, you should always be a high vaginal swab. You take a swab. It is very important that you have got a... Uh, a swab report with you and then the routine antibiotics and I want all of you all to know that this is the latest antibiotics you must give antibiotics for seven days okay and how do you give it the first two the, the, this is the latest NICHD's latest seven day antibiotic regimen and as I told you all ampicillin you'll remember two grams and two grams six thoroughly for 48 hours that you will do now formally along with this ampicillin we used to give erythromycin 
250 milligrams also along with ampicillin 6 hourly for 48 hours okay it is why this erythromycin is added is because it has got neonatal benefits so also uh, you should give if at all you want to give erythromycin you are giving it for neonate it it permeates through the uh, neonatal tissues so that is why it protects the baby that is why we give erythromycin but today that erythromycin has been removed and they say you can give azithromycin 1 gram orally so now i'm going back so in my first 48 hours i'll be giving ampicillin 2 grams 6 hourly for 48 hours and along with that i'll be giving azithromycin 1 gram orally after that today they say that you need give oral amoxicillin for the next five days and you can give it 500 milligrams TDS for five days. That is the latest. So you can follow that because earlier on, you know what we were giving? We were given amoxicillin along with erythromycin. If you want, okay, if you want, you can add an erythromycin. Then when you give it is 333 milligrams, 8 hourly, because along with the ampicillin, 8 hourly, 500, 8 hourly, then if you want, you can add an erythromycin, 333, that is 330 milligrams, 8 hourly for five days. So, 2 hours, 48 hours plus 5 days, 7 days. After that, you don't have to give antibiotics. Okay. okay, okay if, your, if your swab shows infection, terminate the pregnancy. Okay. Don't carry on because you're landing yourself in dire straits. First question is that uh, oral progesterone, which one is the best? Micronized progesterone or didogesterone? Very good. See, this micronized progesterone is actually made for vagina. It's called MVP, micronized vaginal progesterone. It was made for vaginal use. But then the representatives told us that when we use the SR preps, you know, the micronized SR, you know, there are many things uh, with the SR, sustained release, that can be used orally. But please remember the vaginal is the best because 90% bioavailability when given vaginally, only 10% when given orally. So today, that is why we change over to didrogesterone, which is an orally uh, absorbed uh, progesterone, which you can give it as 20, 10 milligrams BD. Okay, so next question, right. which is asked is, that, can you give magnesium sulfate and tocolysis with Nicardia together? Magnesium, magnesium sulfate okay. and tocolysis with Nicardia together. Yeah, very good. See, this is a, a query they put even in preeclampsia. They say don't combine magnesium sulfate with Nicardia because it produces more respiratory depression. But actually, if you're giving it carefully monitoring, no harm. We are Whenever we give magnesium sulfate, both our way, aren't we monitoring the respiration, the, uh, the urine output and the jerks? So do that and give it no harm. But they always say that the reason why it should not be combined is because there is more amount of respiratory depression, they say. It, it, it confounds the respiratory depression. Another one goes, if the patient is 28 weeks flex with a short cervix, preterm labor, why is there any role for circulage? Yeah, really there is no role. I told you 13 to 23 weeks is the time for circulage. If it's an emergency circulage where it's bulging membranes, you can do it up to 28 weeks. After that, no place for circulage. You transfer it to a place where there is mucus facilities, let it deliver. Okay. Another question is that which we have answered only preterm labor is at uh, 34 to 37 weeks. Is there any role of steroids? Yeah, that we already said. If she has already. not had steroids, between 34-36 weeks, you can give a course of steroids because steroids have got other beneficial effect apart from our days. Uh, that is the same question they have asked. 28 weeks rescue circulage is uh, that's, uh, the same thing you answered, madam. And uh, uh, another question which is asked is that sometimes there will be high leak at 34-32 uh, weeks. Uh, uh, it stops after some time and rest. We have uh, then can we push and all these things. Oh, is there, any, is there any drug to uh, seal the uh, fluid or increase oh, the very fluid? Good. Oh, very good. See, you know, that sealant will come in only for an hydrogenic when you do an amniocentesis and it leaks. That is the time when you can put a sealant. You understand? Not Where, where will you know where the rupture is? Amma? You will not know where it is. You understand? So you can't put a sealant then. So, but if there is a high rupture, you go by the ultrasound. So, when you keep monitoring when the ultrasound, you check two, three things. One is check the liker, check the biophysical profile and then CTG monitor. These are the three things as you are taking her every week, week by week, twice a week or thrice a week, depending on which period of gestation you will have to keep monitoring. So, high leak, yes, please carry on the pregnancy because you will find that many times, see, what are you worried about? 
that the membranes when see the first uh, um, uh, the gate for the uterus is the cervix so when the cervix is closed infection will not go the second thing which obstructs infection thing is the operculum or the cervical plug of mucus so when the cervix dilates the plug of mucus falls and infection can go in the third thing is when the real gate is open when the membranes rupture then infection just rides in just rides in causing choriamnionitis infects the baby in the newborn and all the thing so if it's a high leak no props carry on every case should be individualized all what i've told you is only to guide you do you understand guide you in your management and one more thing they ask is a 13 weeks recurrent abortion so how early you will put circlage 13 weeks the recurrent abortion <laughs> okay let me tell you then there is no place for circlage do you know and before 13 weeks some other cause it is but will you put a circlage after the 13 yes i will put a circlage but up to 13 weeks you know because it's always a the cervical insufficiency or cervical incompetence the second trimester event do you know how it happens when your capsularis that is the decidia capsularis and the decidia parietalis when they both fuse together what happens the whole fetus fills the uterus so then the weight of the fetus is directly transmitted to the cervix that is why it is a second trimester event the cervical incompetence so what happens if it's an insufficient or incompetent cervix it will just painlessly dilate that is called cervical incompetence so if your uh, thing has occurred before 13 weeks that is not the cause okay another question they are asked uh, just before an emergency circlage if you put or any circlage will you give tocolytics that we told that yeah, yeah, emergency, emergency other circlage we may not give well, madam uh, other circlage a, we may not uh, give but uh, if at all you want to give like that you give it for 48 hours you are not you will not be wrong but emergency circlage you must give a tocolytic without a tocolytic deep trendelenburg position <laughs> good relaxant anesthesia with or without all that you cannot do it yes so many other questions are there all are been answered as our discussion thank you madam thank you so much and uh, thank you uh, uh, students also for active participation